Well, Sydney ciders are in store for a very different start to the new year, with the Premier warning residents to stay away from the city. Restaurants and bars that are normally booked out are now bracing for a significant hit on what is traditionally one of the busiest days of the year. To talk more about this, I'm joined by Catherine O'Regan, Executive Director of the Sydney Business Chamber. Good afternoon to you, Catherine. Good afternoon. Usually billions of eyes turn to Sydney Harbour for our world-renowned fireworks display this year. We've been told not to go into the CBD. Given the year we've endured, did you think that this scenario was a threat? Did you think we would see this happen after the last 12 months? Well, the last 12 months have been particularly tough for businesses in the CBD, um, but I am pleased the fireworks, although shortened, are, are going to go ahead because it is a good symbol to the world and hopefully that can really keep people motivated for a good business year in 2021. The, the foot traffic and the CBD, gosh, it went right down to about 20% of normal in April and it's even less than that these days, but businesses want to have this happen short and fast so they can get back to trade. Look, traditionally the harbour uh, restaurants and whatnot are booked out. What is the forecast for Thursday night? Are businesses seeing a, a huge decline in cancellations, etc.? Those businesses that are able to open in a COVID safe way, they do have some bookings and I'm sure that the people who will come will enjoy that particular evening in and all the restrictions because they do want to get the most out of our harbour city and it will be tough for some of those smaller businesses, which might be not the cafes and the restaurants who have the bookings, but some of the other ones that attract the foot traffic, the retail in particular, they're still going to do it tough. And it's not only the restaurants and the hospitality side of things that have really felt the brunt this year either. I imagine it's the hotels too. Yeah, the hotels and bed nights have been really tough throughout the Sydney and the CBD. You know, we've got some great quality hotels there and um, it's really one of the things that, you know, we are trying to, you know, holiday at home, but perhaps not in the CBD for the time being. But whether it's the, you know, the restaurant, the hotel, the cafe, um, it's all of those who really, I think, just braced over the last 12 months and, you know, really finding the next few weeks are going to be the same. So let's hope that we can start to ease things back soon. Is it also the weeks and the months ahead that are of most concern? Because, and, and I suppose the uncertainty as well. I imagine each day businesses are just sort of waiting for that 11 o'clock press conference like the rest of us. Yeah, I think many of us are just saying, how many? Is it going to be better? Um, look, this is definitely the peak period, that summer period for, for retail and the CBD. Um, and even the fireworks themselves, that tends to bring something like $133 million in for an economic value just in the one night. So it will be down. We know it will be down on that. Um, and there are measures in place which hopefully can boost in that January period to bring some of that foot traffic back into the city if we can. Um, for those who don't know, there are those Dine and Discover vouchers which give you $100 to, to spend in the city and they're due to kick in in late January. So hopefully we can make up some of that lost trade. You know, and, and how much do you encourage people to, to do that, to make the most of those vouchers and the like as we head into the new year? Because I think so often prior to COVID-19, we had all looked to travel elsewhere, uh, but now it's a chance to really explore our own backyard, our own cities, which are, let's be honest, among the best in the world. I can't disagree with that. We do have a great city here in Sydney and it is definitely lots of people are rediscovering the local um, and it is even if you can't um, come into the CBD, it's still a value to you know, go and grab something at your local and celebrate New Year with your family. But um, the CBD, you know, it, it accounts for 25% of the economic value of the state. So we need the CBD to survive and thrive. Um, and so when it comes right, we don't want you to forget about the CBD and come back in as soon as you can. What is your biggest concern moving forward? Of course, it has been a very difficult year, a tumultuous year, particularly for the hospitality industry. What is your biggest worry? 
Oh, the biggest worry is, I think, just the, the prolonged um, shutdown. We don't want to do what's happened in, in Victoria, in New South Wales. That makes it most challenging for businesses. The longer you shut down, the harder it is to return. It's harder to keep your staff engaged. It's harder to get the customers to come back in. And so having something that is short, tight, um, rather than a prolonged shutdown, that, that will make a real you know, problem for businesses. So that's why we're trying and we do support the, the ideas of some of the restrictions that we've got now as targeted as possible so that we can return. Uh, the city may look different over time. We know that people are going to potentially do a lot more work home flexibility, um, but that actually, I think, creates some opportunities for the city to be a highly pedestrianised place, to be a place that you come not just to work, but to enjoy it. So hopefully we can make some opportunities out of some of these hard times. Has that been the response from a lot of businesses that they're having to pivot during this time and, and look at a different way of operating moving forward? Yeah, there's been two, two types of this in the sense that there's been some fantastic small businesses that really have changed their business model. You know, those in particular in the CBD, I know who are targeting international tourists, have changed their products, changed their services to really bring you know, Australians and local and Sydney siders to, to their store or to their services or to their walkabout tours. Um, so those things have been really quite nimble, can really make, make a difference. Um, big corporations that are in the CBD are definitely offering their staff, their employees, and the employees seem to want that work home um, flexibility and they're adapting their office environments to be very much collaborative spaces rather than sit and work because we know that we can sit and work um, on the kitchen table doing Zoom. Um, but when you want to have you know, innovation, you want to do things in a collaborative way, those workplaces, those things that are inside the buildings of some of those big office blocks may actually change over time. And just lastly, and I don't want to bring the mood down, but how long can some of these businesses hang on for? Because that seems to be the concern that there is no end in sight. Yeah, look, certainty is what every business wants. Um, and sometimes, you know, even if you have to do things for a week, you just need to know it's shut down for a week. And if you're then told it's another week, you know, it's it's tough. It really is tough. And I know some businesses haven't been able to manage things and they've gone into hibernation um, and reassessing exactly what they want to do going, uh, going forward. So it is hard. Um, each business with the um, number of employees, the number of um, customers, you have, the type of industry you have, it's really quite different relative to each of those businesses. They're all making really tough decisions whether they can stay in the game, um, change or come back later. And it really has been quite flexible, but I've seen some really resilient businesses. So they're good. And I'm hoping many of them can, can take it through this period. We are a resilient bunch. We certainly know <laughs> that. Catherine, what is your message to people as we head into the new year? Um, once these restrictions are eased ever so slightly in whatever capacity that might be, what do you say to people watching at home? What I say is, look, we are good and we are resilient um, and I think that this has definitely challenged us, but let's try and make those opportunities come to fruition. And 2021 may just be a little bit easier, but it's finding those new opportunities, working together in a collaborative way that I think we'll be able to get through this. There is always a silver lining. Catherine O'Regan, Executive Director of the Sydney Business Chamber, thank you for your time. Wishing you and your loved ones a very happy and safe New Year. Thank you, and to you too.